Good morning and welcome to Wickford and Stanford La Hope Salvation Army on Sunday the 14th of February. We're so glad that you could spend some time with us today. In the week ahead, on Monday, we have our Zoom Bible study. If you would like to take part in that, please contact us and we'll gladly supply you with the details. And then, coming up on Thursday in Wickford, the town's food bank will take place in our car park between 10 a.m and 11.30 a.m. We're going to listen to the Bible reading just now and Carol is going to bring that for us. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 and it's entitled A Prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. We're now going to listen, um, perhaps sing along to song number 374, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planted and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, sun, moon and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is is Lord, from him all life proceeding, yet gave his life a ransom by setting us free. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise him with alleluias, for Jesus is Lord. Is Lord, O sin, the mighty conqueror, from death he rose, and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit to show my works of power that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise be with alleluia, for Jesus is Lord. 
God is the master of fine detail. Physicists, in particular, find his precision in the created order absolutely astonishing. A nudge in one direction or the other would mean no universe and no life. For example, you don't have to understand physics in the following quotation from Dr. Stephen Mayer to understand the concept of God's absolutely amazing attention to minute detail. Here's the quotation. Take the expansion of the universe, which is fine-tuned to one part in a trillion, 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 trillion. That is, if it were changed by one part in either direction, a little faster, a little slower, we could not have a universe that would be capable of supporting life. God's mathematics of creation are still being marvelled at by our scientists and our physicists, so it is not surprising that the Creator himself remains beyond our understanding. As far back as the book of Job in the Old Testament, chapter 36, verse 26, we read this. How great is God beyond our understanding. The number of his years is past finding out. Now Paul was brought up as a strict Jew. He marvelled at creation. However, his letters to the early churches do not focus on the neat mathematical formula and facts without which the universe would not function. But the complete disregard God had for mathematics when it came to his relationship with his special creation. That's you and I. His disregard of mathematics in his relationship with us and his infinite love for us are just opposite sides of the same coin. He says to the church in Ephesus, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. The Good News translation says, to know this love, although it can never be fully known. It is an intentional double paradox. Paul is saying, firstly, although it is a love we can never explain with our heads, it is a love that we can know in our hearts. And secondly, it can be measured out to you, but it is not a finite love. You can never have all the fullness of God's love in your heart. What you can do, as a follower of Jesus, rooted and growing in his love, is to daily become aware of and filled with more of his love than you were yesterday. And this is a paradox that was picked up in a Salvation Army chorus dating from the 1970s. The more I surrender to Jesus my Lord, the more of his fullness I know. The more I give him, the more he gives me, his peace and his grace he bestows. I cannot outgive him, for he gave his all. Can I do less than answer his call? The more I surrender to Jesus my Lord, the more of his fullness I know. And the heart of this particular paradox is found in the line, I cannot outgive him, for he gave his all. That is grace. Grace is at the heart of the paradox. Grace is at the heart of God's love for us. In logical human terms, at best grace makes little sense, and at worst it makes no sense at all. Paul the theologian put it like this, writing to the Roman church, chapter 5, verses 7 to 9. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? 
You see, it is grace which is at the heart of the mathematical paradox of God. God, whose mind is so precise when it comes to the engineering and running of the universe, the construction of the human body, and the forging of the creativity of the human mind, God suddenly becomes indifferent to the mathematics of his relationship with us. And Paul reminds us of God's gracious love by telling us that it was while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In that great love chapter in the letter, first letter to the Corinthians, Paul reminds us that grace exists where love keeps no record of wrongs. No wonder Paul exhorts Christians to put their roots in his love. His words have even reappeared in a children's Sunday school chorus. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. A wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get round it. Oh, wonderful love. Children's chorus, but for the adults, Annie Johnson Flint, crippled with arthritis, wrote, His love has no limits. His grace has no measure. His power, no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. Now these words were distributed by a manufacturer of greeting cards in America towards the end of the First World War. Annie was the Helen Steiner Rice of her day, but wrestled with pain all her adult life. Yet she knew the unmeasurable grace of God, experiencing it every day. Do you have the same daily experience of grace? If not, I wonder why that is. Before continuing, let's remind ourselves what we mean by God's grace. Put simply, it is the undeserved outpouring of God's love on us. A love we have done nothing to merit. Some people use the acronym as follows. God's riches at Christ's expense. And if you take the first letter from those five words, it spells out grace. Having the love of God, the forgiveness of God in our lives, helps us in three amazing ways. Firstly, the brother of Jesus, an early leader of the church in Jerusalem, has left us a letter in which, chapter 4, verse 6, he says of God, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God is continually pouring out his grace into our lives. Paul's desire for the Ephesian church is that they may be filled to all the measure of the fullness of God. This is not a one-off. God always has something more in store for us. So in the words of Jesus, we need to continue to ask and seek and knock. We do so humbly, recognising that we can do nothing in our own strength that there is nothing we can do to deserve or merit his grace and his power, but that when we put our roots deep down in him, he will fill us with all we need to deal with each day as it comes. Just as a plant needs to suck up moisture through its roots each day, we need God to fill us each day with his love and grace. Secondly, when we come in humility, recognising our need for God, that we cannot operate without his help, we have an amazing promise to hold on to. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 gives us this promise. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. This is a remarkable statement by the prophet. He is responding to the people's claim and accusation that God has forgotten them, that they have been passed by by God. But Isaiah says, look, God hasn't forgotten his people, 
especially those who feel weak at this time. Yes, God overlooks whole nations who have no time for him, regarding them as but a drop in the bucket. But for the humble people who put down their roots in his gracious love, he gives his supernatural power and increases their strength. Thirdly, we know that the quickest way to build up a number is not by addition, but by multiplication. For example, if you add, say, ten to a number, the number increases by far less than if you multiply it by ten. Jude, another early church leader who has a letter in the New Testament, writes to those people, the Christians, who have been called and made holy by God the Father, to those who have been saved or preserved in Jesus Christ. And having established the credentials of these Christians, these humble Christians, he extends the following blessing to them. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. You see, God wants to bless us as we humble ourselves before him, as we seek his power and might to help us through each day. Amazingly, the blessings he has for us cannot be measured. He doesn't want to give us just a bit more mercy and just a bit more peace and just a bit more love, adding a few bits here and there at random. Instead, he offers to take what we have, to take what we can offer in humility, and multiplies it to make it so much more larger. Suddenly, the faith, the size of a seed, blossoms into a tree of seeds. Suddenly, whilst five loaves of bread can feed just one small lad, they feed 5,000 strapping men. And one Christian who humbles himself before God asking for his help, you and I, can be filled to overflowing with the love and power and might of God, and as a result be able to have the confidence of a giant to face the problems which we confront day by day. And you will find these three scripture promises set to a helpful rhyme by a rather weak invalid. And first, put into the public domain, not by a theologian, but by a humble card manufacturing company. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labours increase. To added afflictions, he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, he multiplies peace. Please watch and listen to the presentation that follows. I hope you'll find it helpful. May God bless you.
a benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen.